So I noticed a lot of my viewers cannot afford my three to 10 grand off-grid solar power systems with lithium batteries. And so today we're gonna to go over a small but high quality solar power system that's capable of running a laptop, some lights, and a fan. So a lot of people that live in vans or RVs, this is probably all you need. And you don't need to spend a lot of money for a solar power system. So first let's talk about the components in the system. We have a 100 watt solar panel that's gonna charge a 35 amp hour valve regulated sealed lead acid with a pulse width modulation controller. These are not super efficient because it doesn't have PowerPoint tracking, but for a cheap system, and for most people just trying to power a laptop, this is actually fine and all you will probably need. Next, we will also charge this battery with a Renogy 20 amp DC to DC battery charger. So this goes between your alternator and the battery so you can charge it while you drive. The next thing that we have is an eight amp AC power outlet battery charger. So you connect it to this battery if you have an AC outlet and you can charge it up. And so we're gonna connect three charging sources, but how are we going to use the power that we store in this battery? We are going to learn how to connect an inverter so we can add AC appliances with power outlets. And we're also gonna learn how to connect a laptop adapter. And this is the most efficient um, way to use a 12 volt battery system with off-grid solar to charge a laptop. So now you know the major components, now let's put them together with some tools and wire. First tool you want is cable cutters, next tool is wire strippers, and you also need some crimpers, but do not use pliers, you need dedicated crimpers for crimping. And you will also need a small screwdriver for these small little input terminals. And we also need some wires. So using 10 or 12 gauge primary hookup wire at an automobile store like AutoZone is really good stuff. You can also go to Home Depot and buy this stuff as well. You want multi-strand pure copper wire. So the first part of the system is mounting this battery in a safe place. You wanna have it so it's not too hot, not too cold, and secured in your vehicle so it will not tip over. And then next to the battery, we want to mount this PWM controller. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to put this piece of wood right here and we're going to mount this controller on the piece of wood. And now we need to connect the controller to the battery with some wires. And this might be scary for beginners, but it's very simple. On the battery, we have a positive or a red terminal. We have a negative or a black terminal on the battery. And then up here, we have symbols. We have a battery symbol and a solar panel signal. You see positive, negative, positive, negative. So the first wire we need to connect is from the battery symbol negative down to the battery's negative. So we're going to get a piece of wire and we're going to put some crimp connectors on it so that we can attach this to this. So for demonstration purposes, let's cut this one off and put a new one. So use the cable stripper to remove the insulation so it looks like this. So how are we going to connect this wire to this battery terminal? We're going to use crimp connectors. And if you look at a case, you'll see the yellow ones and that's for 10 and 12 gauge wire. This is 12 gauge wire. So what we want to do is find the ring terminal that fits our battery stud. And so on this battery, we have this little tiny machine screw or bolt that goes inside of there. And so as long as it fits it perfectly like this, where there's lots of surface area, we can use this little crimp connector to attach this wire to this battery terminal. And so all you have to do is slip it over the wire and then use a crimper to smash it. Make sure all the wire strands are inside and you see it poking out the other end and then you smash it. And then you can also use a heat gun to shrink this, but I'm not gonna use it because I'm too lazy. And this is what your first wire should look like. Now we need to measure how far this wire needs to go. And for this system, it just needs to go right here. So we're gonna snip it at around here and then we're gonna strip it. Then we're going to unscrew this terminal all the way and then screw it all the way down and then feel if it's strong and that's it our first wire is connected so we've done the negative cable but when we do the positive we want to add a fuse near the battery terminal and this will protect the wire and the device if it were to ever short circuit and watch my other videos if you want to learn what that means and these are really cheap and easy to find at automotive parts store and you want to buy the more expensive ones. Do not buy the cheap Chinese ones because they're horrible. So first strip the wire on one end and add a crimp connector that can attach to your battery and then crimp it. On the other end we want to use another crimp connector to attach wire to connect to this. So first we're going to strip this wire and then we're going to use a butt splice connector. This can connect two wires and then you want to crimp it. 
And now we need a wire that connects from the fuse to the positive terminal on the controller. And then crimp it. And now we need to measure this wire and cut it and then put it inside of the terminal. Be sure to hold the wire while you're tightening it down because they like to slip out while you're screwing down this terminal. So now we have two wires connected and we need to attach a fuse. Please check out my website to learn what size fuse or check out my book. But for this system, I'm only going to use 100 to 200 watts max. And so for a 30 amp controller, you usually, usually want to use a 35 amp fuse. But for what I'm using, I can use a 30 amp fuse because that's the max amp limit of this inline fuse holder. But for most of you guys that are using under 300 watts of solar power with this controller, use a 30 amp fuse and you'll be good to go. And after we connect the fuse, you will see that these green lights will turn on. If you're using a sealed lead acid, you want to have it on green, and it's already on green. We're using sealed lead acid, so that's good. If you're using a gel, a flooded, or a lithium battery, you want to hold this down for seven seconds, and then it will flash, and you will be able to change the battery type. So this is the orange, it actually looks yellow. Here's the red for flooded. And here's the blue for lithium. And it's on green right now because we have sealed, so we're gonna let it go and then we'll save the settings. Now we need to attach some solar panel hookup wires to the input terminals on the controller. And this is our 100 watt solar panel. And the one with the O-ring, this is the positive and it's labeled on here plus. And then over here is negative. I like to do the negative first. So the one that looks like this, you wanna plug in your extension cable wire and then this wire will go all the way to the charge controller. And then insert the negative solar panel wire in here and then screw it down. And now we can do the positive. So take this one and attach it to your extension cable. And then go over here and insert the positive into the positive solar panel. And right when you connect the solar panel, you will see that the PV light is flashing. That means that it is charging this battery with solar panel power. And even though the charge controller says it's charging the battery, you need to make sure that this solar panel is in full sunshine if you want it to charge the battery at a fast rate. So now we're gonna learn how to connect a wire with an XT60 connector directly to the battery and add a fused line. And this will enable us to use these XT60 connectors so we can connect multiple devices or charging sources to this one battery. And the most important thing that you have to get right with these is knowing which one is positive and which one's negative. So on here, you will see small symbols. And on this side, it's positive where it's square. And where it's more rounded is negative. You wanna follow that wire down. And so this one is negative and the other one is positive. So let's start with the negative and connect it to this battery. Before we attach this wire to the battery terminal, we need to disconnect one of these solar panel wires so we do not burn out this charge controller. And then we can safely disconnect the wires from the battery. So what you wanna do is add a terminal connector that can connect this to the battery. So now we have the negative wire and now we need to connect the positive, but we need a fused line. We're gonna add this inline fuse. So repeat what we did earlier. So for this one, we have 14 gauge wire with a fuse holder and we're not gonna be using that much power from it. So we're gonna use a 20 amp fuse. If you don't understand fuse sizing, please check out my book or check out my website to learn more. So now the positive and the negative is connected and we can use these XT60 adapters. And let's say I need to connect a laptop to these XT60 connectors. What you wanna do is first get a pre-made XT60 connector that we can crimp easily and you wanna get the male one. So it looks kind of confusing because this looks like a female at first, but the bullets are going inside of this one. So this is technically the female and this is the male. So take the male one, find the positive, which is on this side and the negative on this side, and then take your cigarette lighter power supply for your laptop and then strip it, remove the cigarette lighter plug and you'll see a positive and a negative. And this is one wire and then do two wires. And then it should look like this. Positive goes to positive, negative goes to negative. Very simple. And because this is all connected, we can plug it in. And you will see the light illuminate and now you can connect this to your laptop. And depending on the size of the inverter, you can connect it to this. I'm only going to be powering small things so it's safe to connect this. But if your fuse blows, you're gonna have to connect this directly to the battery with its own supplied cables. But for us, we don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna turn it on and you can see that the green lights illuminated. So we have a USB and we have power outlets. 
and this is our AC outlet plug charger and so you can use the clamps that come with it to just attach directly to this but if you want a more permanent solution you can have an XT60 connector with one of these adapters or you can splice a terminal connector directly to the battery it's okay to use this and the charge controller for solar at the same time a lot of people got confused and scared about that in one of my videos but it's okay all you have is a positive and a negative and you connect it directly to the battery let's test this out right now i have it plugged into an ac outlet and it shows green light and this is also connected to the battery with an xt60 connector with the positive and the negative so now all you have to do is press start and you can see that this light illuminated, so now our battery is charging with AC power. These plugs are pretty convenient, but you can always just connect permanent appliances or chargers directly to the battery with a fused line. So for example, with this AC power outlet charger, you're going to have your positive and your negative. So attach the negative to the negative terminal of the battery, and then when you attach the positive, give it its own fuse and then rate the fuse for your appliance. So for example, this is an eight amp charger, so I would use like a 10 amp fuse. And if I were to connect this laptop charger permanently to this battery, I would connect the negative to the negative terminal of the battery, and then the positive, because it has 10 amps max, I would have like a 12 amp fuse to connect to the positive terminal. Because if you put a lot of appliances through these XT60 connectors and you have only one fused line, it can get kind of tricky. So these are great for low power consumption appliances, but if you have multiple large chargers or laptop chargers on one battery, you should supply them with their own positive and negative directly to the battery. But if all you're running is a laptop charger and some LED lights, you can use almost all of your appliances through this little octopus connector cord. And now we're going to attach a DC to DC battery charger to this system so that we can charge it up with our vehicle's alternator. And this is pretty easy. You have an input on this side where the alternator connects to and you have an output on this side where you connect to the battery. So I made an XT60 connector thing that I can attach to the output. And this is what it looks like. Now I can connect it to this battery with our nice little XT60 connector. Make sure that you do not reverse these two wires. If the negative goes to the positive, you will burn this thing out. And you can see at the input, we have two wires, a positive and a negative, that go out to some clamps. So if I put this on a vehicle's battery or alternator, I can charge up this battery with this battery charger safely. And then you have to take a wire from the D positive and run it to the ignition circuit on the vehicle. And then use these DIP switches to program which charge profile parameters you want. Please check out my other video if that doesn't make any sense. But yeah, these are pretty great. Another thing that you need is a voltmeter to check the battery capacity state of charge. So when none of the loads or chargers are connected and you test the voltage, you want to make sure it's above 12.2 volts. This will ensure that this battery will not be damaged because it's at too low of a state of charge. And these battery capacity voltage monitors are very cheap and all they're good for is testing to see if the battery is too low. So if you're using appliances at night and you run the battery to 12.2 volts, you need to turn off all of the loads or disconnect all of the cables from the battery so that you do not run the battery down too low. So there's really not much to this system. It is dead simple. All you need to really know how to do is how to crimp properly how to use you know positive and negative figuring out which one goes where but most all of these components just have two wires a positive and the negative and if they're rated for 12 volts you can connect them to this battery also if you want to upgrade this system you can add solar panels to this controller or you can make a bigger battery bank what i would recommend most people doing is getting a 100 amp hour battery and there's one on my website in my budget section they'll have linked listed below and that will be a good size for a lot of people but i know some people just need lights and a laptop and this 35 amp hour will, will accomplish that really well i actually had this size system for over six months when i was traveling i had a toyota sienna i put a bed in the back and this actually did everything i needed it to so i think this will make a lot of you guys happy all i used was 200 watts of power and i powered a gaming laptop every single day and a fan and actually a lot of other stuff i even cooked a rice cooker with this little thing so yeah i think you guys will really like this and 
So I hope this helps you guys. Please check out the website because I have all of these parts listed out with a nice little schematic which might make it easier. I know all these wires might get a little confusing, but honestly, it's really simple. So please check out my website. And I hope you guys like this video. I'll talk to you later. Bye.